Dear Nintendo, hi, it's me, Austin. Also, this video is gonna have spoilers for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which like if you're trying to avoid those right now, it's time to stop watching, okay? Are you gone? Good. Because I have a bone to pick with Nintendo and it's really easy to articulate. Link and Zelda are both super dead. Dead, 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 deadity, dead, dead, dead. Deader than my driver's ed teacher said I would be if I ran away from a train instead of toward it if my car stalled on the railroad tracks. The reason you don't want to do this is because when a train hits a car, the shrapnel and the car itself fly in the direction the train is running. So you want to run the opposite direction at a 45 degree angle to decrease your chances of getting hit by shards of glass and metal. Every time you answered a question like that wrong in his class, by the way, he'd go like this. WRONG! BAM! You're dead now! I, uh, I died a lot in driver's ed. Where was I? Oh, right, Link and Zelda. Dead. Why am I saying they're dead? Because they are. Well, at least one of them is. Not at the start of the game, mind you. No, Link is fine during all that Demon King resurrection, magic necrotic arm stuff, but he does not survive long enough to explore Hyrule. Here, we can slow down the beginning footage and I can show you the exact moment Link's soul leaves his body. And it's right here. Yep. That's a dead guy, all right. Why do you ask? Because nobody could survive a fall from this height at this speed crashing into water. It's impossible. Just for the beginning part alone, which ruled by the way, I'm going to have to bust out my favorite, my classic, my game theorist disapproved. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom makes no goddamn sense. Okay, so you've probably heard this nitpick about gaming and water before, and I guess probably movies and water because it's a staple trope in our entertainment. Fall from a great height and hit the ground? BAM! You're dead now, unless you're Peggy Hill. Fall from a great height into the gentle embrace of a pool of water, however, and you're suddenly fine. No worries, it's like falling into a ball pit made out of foam and kittens. I think this is a thing in most games, though my favorite happens to be Minecraft, where if you're really good, you can carry around a bucket of water and place it down on the ground right before you hit it, and it will dead in your fall and you'll be completely fine. But it gets even better because you don't even have to have a full block of water. Literally any amount of water, even this tiny couple centimeters is enough to save you from the worst fall in the game, from build limit to the lowest point of bedrock. This is an extreme example of the phenomenon, but it gets the point across. In video games, water equals safety from falling, end of story, unless you're the early Grand Theft Auto games. But that could not be further from the truth. In reality, falling into water at anything resembling terminal velocity is utterly and completely fatal, and I'm gonna prove today that Link is dead now! And probably Zelda too, if he somehow survives his first fall and makes it to the end of the game. And we're gonna do it with my favorite things on Earth. Pixel measurements and nitpicking. Are you ready? Then let's freaking go. So our first challenge in figuring out precisely how dead Link is in the game is to figure out precisely how fast he is falling. In a lot of games, it's impossibly difficult to figure out, but in Tears of the Kingdom, it's super easy. Why? Because of these bad boys right here, the minimap coordinates, X, Y, and Z coordinates. Boy, I wish every game did this. It would make my life so much easier. But ah, the units are unlabeled. They're just units. For all we know, they're not meters, but are I don't know, light years or, or millimeters. 100 millimeters per second is a lot slower than 100 meters per second, and it would make this video dead in the water. Get it? Dead in the water? Eh? I should stop now? Okay, I need to cut down on my caffeine intake. Okay, so we need to know how big one of these units is. Let's assume each unit is a meter just for a second, all right? If that's the case, I can use this staircase as a frame of reference. From here to here, it's one unit, which in this screenshot is 337 pixels. Link stands at 496 pixels, which, if a unit is a meter, would make him 147... Not one... <laughs> okay, yeah, not 147 meters... If a unit is a meter, it would make him 1.47 meters tall, or about 4 foot 9 inches. So where do we go from here? Well, back in time, of course. Back in time to another video I did, or rather stealing an idea from another video I did. We're going, of course, back to Breath of the Wild. Because in Breath of the Wild, there's Ridgeland Tower, and on top of the Ridgeland Tower is a man named Branley, who will initiate the Birdman Research Study minigame, which, um, 
amazingly will give you, that's right, your distance in meters. And can we just stop for a second and appreciate my record of 5,117.9 meters because that distance freaking rules. Anyway, what we actually need to do here is just initiate the minigame and fall straight down. Since this is the same game engine as Tears of the Kingdom and appears to be the same character model as well, we can justify translating any distance we find in this game back to the other and vice versa. Let me introduce you to the difference filter in Photoshop, one of my most used tools, especially for applications like this. Let me show you how it works. First, let's start the minigame, start falling, and take two screenshots from the same perspective, each one one meter distance apart. Okay, we got those. Now we open them in Photoshop. Now the way the difference filter works in Photoshop is the more similar two pixels are, the darker they show up. If they are an exact match, they show up as completely black. So if we layer these two screenshots over each other, they look like this. You can see the place where my stamina wheel is completely black when I turn the difference filter on. So what we want to do is pick a background element as our focus and try to get it to line up perfectly. Then we'll measure the difference. It'll be easier if I just Show you. Okay, I'm gonna pick this mesh spot right here because from experience I think it'll be the most accurate place since it mostly lines up with Link's position and should have the least distortions from perspective. So we take our two screenshots, line this section up, and then measure the difference at the bottom. Okay, so that gets us a difference of 214 pixels, which means in these screenshots, one meter is 214 pixels. Now we gotta figure out how tall Link is in pixels. I like to measure from the back heel to the top of the head for consistency purposes, which gets us precisely 300 pixels. Okay, so that means if a meter is 214 pixels in this game, that Link is 1.4 meters tall in Breath of the Wild, which is four foot seven inches, which is really darn close to the 1.47 meters we got in Tears of the King, so I'm going to say, given our margin for error is about 5% and has a bunch of perspective-based caveats, that we can confirm that one unit in Tears of the Kingdom is indeed one meter. Booyah, sucker! You've been mathed! Okay, so the next part we got to figure out then is how fast Link is moving before he hits the water. Easy! At his fastest speed, Link moves 10 units in the span of 9 frames, which works out to be 66 meters per second. This is very fast. That is 214 kilometers per hour or just shy of 150 miles per hour. Well, you know what they say. It's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop at the end. So how sudden is Twink's stop at... Oh wow, I really said... <laughs> okay, I really said Twink there. Whoopsie daisy. How sudden is Link's stop at the end of this first dive at the beginning of the game? Well, as he hits the water, Link immediately begins to slow down. It's not a straight one frame stop, though. He dives about four meters and slows down to a full stop in a third of a second. Stopping from 66 meters per second in one third of a second means that Link would be stopping at a deceleration rate of 202 meters per second squared or over 20 Gs. The instant his body slowed down, his organs would be ping-ponging around his body like a, a, a ping-pong table. Assuming he weighs 45 kilos, the weight of the average teenager, that little lad would be experiencing over 9 kilonewtons of force throughout his entire body. What does that translate to? Well, that's the pressure of an alligator's bite, covering every inch of his body. We're talking burst eyeballs, crushed bones, and liquefied tissues. And the worst part is, the guy has landed head first, basically headbutting the water with his single most vital organ, his brain. You see, water is quite soft, but it wants to cling to itself, and that's why you see water form little balls when floating in zero G environments. This is called surface tension, although it's really a tension that exists everywhere in the water. Water molecules are highly attracted to one another due to their many hydrogen bonds, you see, so it wants to stick together. What this means is, when something comes into contact with it at these massive speeds, is that this water does not want to get out of the way, so it just doesn't. Or it doesn't do it at a rate that would be fast enough to save your life. And the thing about water is that it is actually very, very, very heavy. One cubic meter of the stuff weighs a freaking ton. Literally, one ton. I think that's actually how we define the ton, actually, or actually how we define the ton in ye olde times. So each meter you go down, it's like you're getting slammed by one ton of bricks. You're gonna have a bad time. But what if you go slower? Well, no, you're still screwed, absolutely, because the slowest top speed you can reach from here is 30 meters per second when you've got your body wide open, which is still fast as fuck, boy! 108 kilometers per hour or 67 miles per hour, giving you better chances of survival as long as you don't belly flop, but you're still going to be hitting the water with 4,000 newtons of force, which is enough to shatter pretty much 
much every bone in your body upon impact, or at least the first ones that hit the water. Even if you landed feet first, good luck swimming ashore with your shattered tibia and cracked femur. Pray, pray that your internal organs survive this fall. What about using your paraglider right before impact? Well, ignoring the fact that Link doesn't have one of these bad boys yet, you'd be just as screwed, if not more so, because you're coming to nearly a complete standstill in 366 milliseconds, which means all 100 kilos of weight is gonna be tugging at your arms with the bite force of a human being, which is more than strong enough to yank your arms right out of your sockets, possibly snapping the tendons holding them in, presuming you could somehow even hold on to this bloody thing. Then you'd slip and fall to the ground and hit it at nearly the same speed you were going before. Nope! BAM! You're dead now! Which brings us to the ending of Tears of the Kingdom. When Link and Zelda are falling here, Link grabs Zelda and KABLAM! They splash into the water at full speed, practically exploding upon impact. Even if you played the game perfectly up to this point, survived and never did a dangerous fall, this here is where you'd both bite the dust. End of story. So, so I'm sorry to say Tears of the Kingdom, but I'm gonna have to give you an F for realism, but you get an A plus for fun. What's that? The, the, the level 2 wingsuit negates all falling damage even if you swan dive straight into a rock? Fuck! Sincerely, Austin. I actually haven't beaten Tears of the Kingdom yet, honestly, but I could not resist watching the speedrun that dropped day one of launch where someone beat it in less than 90 minutes. Absolutely wild. That's like less time than I spent in the intro stages. I, I just... I'm not... I, man, I suck at video games. <laughs> I had to throw out a thank you to my Patreon patrons who make this show possible and all the shows we do here possible, even the ones that don't get as much traction. I can do them because I got my Patreon patrons and you guys are the best. And I got to throw out a personal thank you to all of them, but especially these people who paid extra money for me to say their name. I'm talking about M. Lopez, Justin Bush, Dr. Vem, Ronald Coleman, Alan Hagers, TP, Artifox, Marissa Resnick, Nick Patterson, and Loretta Mazur. And if you want to be a Patreon patron, you can head on over to patreon.com slash thescienceyt or patreon.com slash shoddycast and contribute whatever you want. We have a live stream every Saturday where I hang out with you guys and play Project Zomboid, and we have a private section of our Discord server, and uh, yeah, all kinds of fun stuff like that. You get early access, too. That's good stuff right there. Oh, all right. Time to go edit this video. I will see you next time.